<clears throat> hey everybody, welcome back. We're at lesson 19. We're looking at high-speed sync, uh, off-camera flash, and then also using uh, multiple flashes, so more than one flash. Just to recap quickly, um, on the previous session, is uh, every camera has got a specific flash sync speed. That means it's a certain speed which the camera's uh, shutter open and closes. It's fast enough for the flash to get a good exposure with a single flash. And that is normally anything between 1 over 160 and 1 over 250, depending on your uh, on your camera. Uh, the quicker the shutter speed, the quicker the curtains are going to open and close. And at some point, uh, the, the curtains move so quick that multiple bursts are needed from your flashes to um, to make sure that the, the, the entire picture is well exposed. And that is normally when we go beyond uh, the camera's natural um, or native sync speeds. So the quicker the shutter speed, the quicker the curtains open and close, and then we need to tell the flash, you, listen dude, you need to fire continuously for the duration um, of that um, shutter movement. Um, the gear that we that we are using, we, uh, my team and myself, we love the Godox range, um, uh, love this trigger, man, uh, I'm going to talk about him, about, about him, it's a person, <laughs> I'm going to talk about it in just a second. But you get the big boys, the 8400s or the 8600s, that means it's a lot of light. Um, and then our favorites, favorites are the 8200s, um, detachable flash heads like these ones, you can, they're interchangeable as well, the battery lasts forever, it's got a nice modeling light that uh, indeed works really well at night if you want to just, you know, get a modeling light, see where you're walking or just get a little bit of light on your couple. And um, uh, I would uh, really recommend you guys having a look at the, the entire Godox range of products, which is really good. We like this trigger. Um, you also get um, there's a variety of triggers available. What I like about this is um, if you note here, there's no buttons at the back. And uh, it is uh, relevant because whenever you are doing, uh, you know, taking photos, this is normally where your head bumps on top of your camera. So the, your forehead normally kind of uh, knocks this thing uh, about a little bit. And if you've got dials here at the back, then, um, you know, chances are if it's not locked that you're going to change your settings and your exposures and everything altogether. And uh, this, uh, this system works fantastically for us. Um, you've got a whole bunch of different channels. So if you are shooting at a venue like Makiti where there's, uh, where there's one venue, but three different or four different chapels, three or four, I can't remember. Um, let's, uh, let's just say, and the other photographer is also using the same system, then I can just uh, change my channel to, let's say, channel 16, and um, it's not going to influence uh, his flashes, and his flashes are not going to be, uh, he's, he's not going to trigger my flashes. And then also you've got A, B, C, D, and E, That's those are your flashes. Um, you can set all of them individually from from your directly from the camera or directly from the trigger so you don't have to run off to each flash if you've got multiple flashes set up everywhere you don't have to run from the one to the other just to try and make your adjustments because then you're going to be missing um, some of the action that you actually need to be taking photos of so you look down you make your adjustments here and uh, you fire away um, just something to take note of um, if you set up your your let's say there's four flashes um, and you want the all firing towards the subject here in the middle. Let's say you're at a wedding and uh, you need to set up for the for the reception. Then um, what's going to happen now is you're going to set up your flashes. This is your dance floor in the main table or whatever. And um, you're going to switch all of these to TTL. The moment you take your first shot and all these flashes fire, boom, 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 boom. Um, it's going to record the flash outputs from all the different angles and um, it actually saves it to your trigger. So if you want to move it back to your manual settings, if you hold this, this little button, this TCM button, if you hold that in, um, it's going to record your TTL readings on a manual setting, which means that you can make minor adjustments from, um, from each one of those different flashes from a central point. Amazing stuff, man. Amazing stuff. Love technology. <laughs> Please read through. Um, make sure that you do read through your uh, your worksheet. There's um, uh, a few uh, practical sessions as well. Please do not skip those. It's important that you do it. Um, all right. 
just want to run you through this quickly. This was not, um, I didn't shoot this with high speed sync, but uh, I just want to bring the, the principle across. There's two ways of lighting your, your subject. Let's say we had we had the sun here. Now what happened here is that um, we, it looks like an egg. That's a horrible sun. Let's just do this, boom, boom, boom. Ah, you get the idea. <laughs> The bride was getting dressed, it was beautiful. This was in Natal at Brahman Hills and we uh, drove around and we planned the entire shoot. And as soon as the bride finished getting dressed, the mist just started rolling in and this was what we had. I have the light very high up here because I was looking for, for that. Um, if your light is gonna be a little bit lower, then the spill is gonna be, you know, a little bit spread out over here but what i like is i kind of like shooting a little bit more higher up just have to be careful for raccoon eyes and getting shadows in the eyes then but um what i do love getting in my shots is just a little bit of a halo of light around the couple directly on the floor see there's no diffusion on this and um it's quite high up so normally it wouldn't be that high up just get rid of the sun let's just leave it there for now uh, there's two ways to light this. So I normally like shooting over the, the groom's shoulder to make sure that the, the bride's face and everything else is well exposed. Um, coming the, the rays are coming off this imaginary sun that we have in our picture. So I could either um, enhance that, you know, and uh, kind of put a little bit more light uh, from the same direction. Um, and if I don't like that, and I want to have a little bit more drama um, then I would shoot it like this. Um, the alternative is if the sun is on this side, you can just move your flash from this side and get a well-balanced shot with, um, you know, uh, your shadows kind of filled in from the opposite side of the sun. Um, there's, uh, yeah, we'll get that into the next session. I think I'm, I'll, I'll talk about that real quick. So typically this is what the setup will look like. You will have your subject right in the middle. Um, your camera on the side and then uh, the light coming in from from the side what we want to do here what we did we, here is we we um we had two flashes set up so the one flash was in the front and then i've got a flash right at the back pointing slightly upward because i want to create a point of interest at the back um and then um let me just open this this is more or less what the setup looks like and uh, very important is uh, the light at the back, the one from uh, from the front, your subject and your camera. Um, you can, oh man, as long as your flash is just out of out of sight on your on your frame, you should be all right. So it doesn't really matter if you like getting the light from this side or whatever. It's it's going to be all the same. But the process of this is going to be um, take your ambient exposure first. So both flashes are going to be switched off. You're going to take your ambient exposure. Then you're going to switch on the flash at the back. Um, you can gel it or you don't have to just for the sake of the exercise, point it a little bit upward. You can also turn it around and uh, get a backlight facing this way. Um, often overlooked, you know, so this, the possibilities are really endless. You can turn it away, that side, that side, whatever. But as long as you switch everything off, uh, get your ambient exposure, take the shot, then uh, switch everything off again, switch the back flash on, get your shot and exposure ready with the back flash, switch it off, get your uh, exposure ready from, uh, from the front flash, switch it off. And once you've done both setups, you switch everything on and you fire away and you get your shot. Thank you so much for uh, being part of this. Um, we really like uh, to hear back, uh, get a little bit of feedback from you guys. And um, let us know if you, uh, if you nailed this. See you at the next session. Really exciting stuff, you guys.